Hey, so over the last few weeks, I've been spending time in Nashville visiting family. And typically while I'm here, it means that I'm spending more time practicing music and also more time bike riding for transportation. So I had this weird idea to see if I could try to make an instrument out of a bicycle. And I wanted to make this video to show you what I came up with and also show you how you can make it as well if you're interested. So my general idea is to see if we can use the speed of a bike wheel to control a sound in Ableton. From here on out, we'll talk about the speed of a wheel using RPM or revolutions per minute. And high level, we can kind of break this project down into two distinct parts. The first is determining a way to measure the RPM of a wheel. And then the second part is seeing how we can use that value to control a sound in Ableton. For this project, we'll need to use a couple of Arduinos, write some code, and do a little bit of basic circuitry. If you've never used an Arduino, I'll be adding some links in the description where you can find some getting started information. And I'll add links to all of the code and circuit diagrams for this project in the description as well. There are actually quite a few different ways to measure the RPM of a wheel. For this project, I used a reed switch. A reed switch is a switch that closes automatically when it's in the presence of a magnetic field. But you might be wondering, how do you use a switch to measure the RPM of a wheel? That's where we can use code and an Arduino to solve the problem. Generally how this works is that we can place a magnet on one of the rotating portions of the wheel and then place our reed switch nearby. Every time the magnet rotates past the reed switch, we'll get a signal on an Arduino that we can count in our code. Basically to set this up, all I did was connect one side of the reed switch into the ground pin on my Arduino and then the other side into one of the digital pins on the Arduino. In the code, all that happens is that we count the number of times the read switch was activated by the magnet within a short period of time, let's say 500 milliseconds. Then we can use a simple proportion to determine what the RPM would have been if we had looked at that same spinning wheel over the course of an entire minute. I don't wanna to go too far in depth on the code in this video, but you can download the code I wrote from GitHub. I've pasted the link in the description. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to consider making a code walkthrough video or writing up a tutorial if you're interested. So the overall result of all of this is that we now have a way to determine the RPM of our bike wheel. To do this, all we needed was an Arduino, a breadboard, some wires, a read switch, and of course your computer to program the Arduino. Earlier, we talked about how this would be a two-part project. We just learned how to measure the RPM of a bike wheel, so now we need to learn how to use that value to control a sound in Ableton. Ableton actually makes this really easy with the Max for Live integration. Put simply, Max for Live is gonna allow us to use our Arduino and some of its analog inputs to actually control sounds, effects, and other things inside of Ableton. This is already pre-installed with Ableton Live 10, uh, but if you have Live 9 like me, you actually need to download it separately. To set this up, we need to download the Max for Live connection kit. Inside of it, there's a folder specifically focused on Arduinos, and we need to open up the standard firm data Arduino sketch and load that onto a new Arduino. So we had an Arduino for the measuring RPM portion of the project, we need a second Arduino for this portion of the project. I typically delete everything in the session view until I just have one audio track. From there, we can go back to the folder we got from Connection Kit and open the arduino.amxd file just by double clicking it. Once you do that, you'll see a new Arduino specific unit pop up in the effects pane for your audio track. Make sure to select the correct port from the port dropdown. You should select the USB port connected to the Arduino that you programmed with Connection Kit standard firm data. From here, we can map analog input pins on the Arduino to specific effect controls in Ableton like so. What we've essentially done is take the signal coming in from the zero pin in the analog input section of the Arduino, otherwise referred to as A0, and use that to control the amount value for our frequency shifter. So the hardest part of this project is actually just gluing it all together, which honestly seems to be the hardest part of any project. In this project, we had two subsystems, 
one for measuring the RPM of a bike wheel and the other for allowing an analog signal to control an effect value in Ableton. So now we just need to piece it together by allowing our RPM measurement from the bike wheel to be the analog signal that's controlling the effects we have in Ableton. In the code we wrote to measure the RPM of our bike wheel, I added a line that outputs an analog signal corresponding to the RPM. Essentially, if the wheel is going faster, the signal is higher. We're gonna wanna take that analog signal and connect it to the analog input on our Arduino that's connected to Ableton. But the problem here is that Arduinos can't actually produce real, true analog signals. Instead, they use a technique called pulse width modulation, which essentially approximates an analog signal by sending a bunch of digital high-low pulses. The analog signal that we're connecting to the Arduino that is powering our Ableton effects doesn't like the pulse width modulation approach. It'll essentially read it as a bunch of high, low digital pulses and actually just send all of our effects to max and back to zero every few milliseconds. So it won't sound like we want it to sound. To fix this, we need a way to take those pulse width modulation pulses and smooth them out into a more regular analog signal that can be correctly interpreted by our Arduino for Ableton. To fix this, we can use a simple resistor capacitor circuit, otherwise known as an RC circuit. The resistor and capacitor together in an electrical circuit essentially allow us to smooth out our PWM signal into a more regular analog signal that can be correctly interpreted by our Arduino for Ableton. Let's go over the full circuit for this project to show you how everything hooks up. We have our simple read switch circuit from before, but now we've added a new circuit for smoothing out our PWM signal. I take the PWM signal representing our analog RPM signal and run that through a resistor capacitor circuit. I used a 10K ohm resistor and a 47 microfarad capacitor for this project but you can play around with the values if you'd like to. You can see that all of the orange wire corresponds to the PWM signal that has not yet been smoothed, but after we put it through the RC circuit, we have green wiring representing the smoothed analog RPM signal that we can plug into the A0 pin on the Arduino that is connected to Ableton. This smoothed PWM signal should be able to be correctly interpreted by Ableton and we're good to go. Now we have a way to measure RPM, a way to control sound effects in Ableton, and we figured out how to connect it all together. So we're ready to make some music. We had previously mapped the A0 signal from our Arduino that's connected to Ableton to the amount value on our frequency shifter effect. To give us some sound, I made a simple MIDI loop with one of the organs that comes pre-installed with Ableton, but alternatively, you could plug in a MIDI keyboard and play some notes live yourself. So for the second part of this project, overall, all we needed was an Arduino, a breadboard, a resistor, a capacitor, some more wires, and of course, we used our computer to program our second Arduino as well. So here's what it sounds like all together. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching my first tutorial YouTube video. This has been really exciting. In the description, I'll link to some further reading on some of the topics that I talked about if you're not familiar. And if you do try out this project and you run into any problems, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, or in the YouTube comments. Uh, I'll be really, really happy to help out and I'm excited to see what you all make.